Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Gospel Forum Podcast. We are a collective of Reformation-minded Christians that care about doctrine and the local church. Thank you for watching again and for subscribing, if you haven't already. Please do on our YouTube channel, or of course on social media, and of course on your favorite podcast app. We are so glad that we have developed and are growing uh, this community and are so excited to be a blessing to you mm-hmm. as we talk about relevant issues in the culture and, of course, the church. And the whole purpose of this is to bless the local church. And so we pray that we are a blessing to you. So please share these episodes and uh, feel free to uh, write us an email or comment or whatever you'd like and engage with our content. Yeah, Dan, that like button is huge. That like um, button is huge. Yeah, that really, really ups is. the algorithm so that people yeah. can watch the Andy Stanley video oh, too yeah. as well. Oh, uh, well. I say, and if you hit the little bell, you actually get notifications every time. We hit that yeah. bell so yeah. you can be notified when a new wow. episode is released. I've got the bell and I'm the one who uploads the video. So yeah. uh, I get really notified. Uh, yeah. D- double so. But anyway, my name is Dan Sardinas, and uh, I'm one of the hosts of the Gospel Forum. So check mm-hmm. us out on the gospelforum.com. And these are four other brothers with me that are in the fo- Gospel Forum. Let's do introductions just in case you don't know who we are. We'll start this side this time. Hello. I. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, my name's Nick, and uh, I'm a member of King's Cross Church here in Bradenton, Florida. It's great to be here today, Dan. My name is Sean Otto. I am the pastor at Bethel Mennonite Church in Sarasota. My name is Pilgrim Benham, uh, pastor at King's Cross Church. And my name is Micah, also one of the pastors at King's Cross. And I'm very happy to say that May the 4th is finally over. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. That's right. Well, fortunately for us Star Wars fans, uh, this is the May. (laughs) It's still May. And uh, it's still May. Mm -hmm. But uh, since you want to talk about Star Wars, no, I mean, no, 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 sorry. No. Um, wow. The one of the things I really love about Star Wars uh, is that a, a lot of people have some awesome beards. <laughs> that is uh, true. Uh, that is true. Qui Gon wow. had a pretty awesome beard. Obi Wan had a great beard. Has a great beard, well, especially yeah. in the Kenobi series too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So beards in Star Wars are on point, right? Yeah. They're, they're, okay. they're really good. And so are they on preachers. Yes. Mm. Um, what, are tra- what are you trying to yes. say? I'm confused here. Well, well what, what did Spurgeon uh, say? What's that famous quote oh, by Spurgeon? Yeah. Somebody posted that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have it on my phone if I can pull it. Yeah. Uh, Gro- okay. Growing a beard yeah. is most manly, spiritual, and beneficial or something like wow. that. Yeah, that's a, wow. So, uh, but... Well, what oh, so, well, yeah, oh, yeah, right. So, your I, razor got right, yeah, I, you oh, know, okay. so I, I have tried, <laughs> and so I have like three that come out on this side, <laughs> like two a little hairs. It, it's just, it's not worth. it. I used to have a goatee for a while. Uh, I got tired of taking care of even that. So, yeah, just go with the I, mustache. I, I well. You know, that is a thing now. Yeah, it is. It is definitely was, a thing. I rocked the mustache I, for a while. Uh, let's define rocked. I was... Um, um, I got so many compliments from it. <laughs> now, did they wait, lie wait, to me is the next question. Compliments Possibly. from how many people besides your wife? I mean, multiple from her or from other... People? You know, so... Um, so when I told her that I was going <laughs> yes. to do it, uh, when I told her that I was going to do it, she was really disappointed. Okay. And she was like, I so really don't want that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, She's but, the only one that matters, Nick. Uh, but but yeah, after a while, she was like, Nick, please don't run with this. But I kind of like the mustache uh-huh. now. Well, the, I, and, well we I made the mistake. She, she, fi- she said, it's growing on me. And I was like... No, it's growing on me. Uh, 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 oh, boy. <laughs> well, he's not. <laughs> what, what, he's already started with the dad joke. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> and his daughter's not. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, well, I've been doing dad jokes for a long time, so okay. that made me faux pas. Uh, <laughs> somebody <laughs> help us here. All right, he's out. In the he is out. Here. Let's clue yeah, in why does this come about? <laughs> yeah. The reason why we're mentioning this is because in our text thread, there was a picture that I saw. Uh, that compared uh, solid biblical uh, teachers who had great beards. The picture's uh, going up right now. As Look at the screen. Opposed uh, to some false teachers that have no beards at all. Mm. And so 
It's just an admonition. So there's a one-to-one so one clearly, correlation. Good beer, good yes. doctrine. Right. Is that what yeah. you're one-to-one yeah. one so, correlation every right. time, right? Yeah. Although, okay, all right, Dan, right. Dan, you're starting to get some grays coming oh. in your beard. That's wisdom, bro. That's <laughs> wisdom. So, so well, some if that's preachers, the case, then I'm no, getting it too. <laughs> <laughs> so some, some preachers with no beards uh, in this meme, uh, Benny Hinn, Rob mm-hmm. Bell, and Joel Osteen. Yeah, they all have that fair. in common, that's for sure. That's fair. And uh, so anyway, but so, what, so what, what do you think is the appropriate beard length ratio to sermon to content theology. quality. Oh. This is the kind of stuff, this is why our people listen to this stuff. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, there yeah. is a branch of, of really conservative uh, Presbyterianism where yeah, a lot of those guys have these, it's, I don't know, they, they make a point to really have beers. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't need Well, yeah. to it's, be fair, yeah. so do the Amish. So right. I mean, <laughs> well, let's, yeah. we got to be careful. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm, um, we're kidding. There is no appropriate yeah. length to no sermon content ratio. Just, <laughs> I mean, but three inches right. minimum. But be. yeah. So, but, but what about the scripture that says you can't cut the ends of your beards? Oh. Yeah, those are the ringlets, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On the yeah. Side. that you see in like yeah. the city yeah. chairs. Yeah. yeah, there you yeah. go. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. We'll, keep, we'll, keep, we'll keep researching. This. I say I just killed that, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone in the gospel form has a beard, minus two. Yeah, right. Alan would, is not here to Alan. defend Alan himself, Quinones. so he and I stand together. You're, the, you're the beardless brother. The, yeah. thank, there you go. Thank you. Thank Though, you. I, I did see a picture of a beard that Joe used to have, and that is beautiful. Honestly, that that is a beautiful mm, beard. It's yeah. a, it's very Calvinesque for sure. Yeah, yeah. Very oh, yeah. It was, uh, it Joe was, Hamlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah if you yeah. if you guys want to see an awesome beard, there was a guy named B. H. Carroll. Uh, he was the founder of uh, Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, mm. and there is a picture with him with a cigar that was actually painted over because Southwestern didn't want to. Uh, <laughs> advocate for that but anywho uh but he had a beautiful very long mm-hmm. beard but i don't think all men should do that though because sometimes it gets real thin no, and not everybody can do that mangy, yeah. but... Hill, pilgrim when i first met pilgrim he, he had a pretty yeah. lengthy beard yeah so i i don't i don't quite like that then he cut it a little too short uh, after for that. me I remember it's that. just not me i like yeah. to keep it kind of just trimmed up but Anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh, we love you, listeners. And oh, so this man. is uh, some of the content you've come from. Oh, wow. Yeah. We're going to trim this conversation. Next, yeah, next dude, topic uh, will, be, uh, will be growing hair. Oh. <laughs> now let's go down that What way. is the appropriate hair ratio <laughs> to baldness? Well, I mean, there is a biblical case for that one. Uh, Just remember what happened to the kids right. who made fun of Elijah. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> all right, moving on uh, to fear. Uh, yeah. the topic. I'm fearful now. That is a yeah. fearful. I say I'm fearful of she bears for sure. (laughs) So today's main topic of the day is fear. And so we want to handle this topic and uh, explore this on what does the Bible say about fear? Um, Because I think one of the probably most often repeated commands, I don't know how many times it's mentioned, probably over 300 times, Mm -hmm. is the command fear not. Mm -hmm. Fear not. I mean, this is what our Lord says time and time again. So let's talk about fear in our lives, why people wrestle with fears, how do we handle fear, where does fear come from, um, what can we do about that? So um, Sean, can yeah. you kick us off on this wonderful conversation? Yeah, so uh, first of all, let's acknowledge that fear is real, and not all fear is bad. I mean, I, I should fear walking across Interstate 75. Uh, it, it, so there are certain fears that prevent us from being harmed. Um, but not all fears are like that. There are fears that are sinful, uh, and that's what Scripture speaks to, uh, the ones that you reference there most often. And so I think we have to acknowledge fear is real, um, but fear is a fruit of something that's going on in our heart. So in Matthew chapter 16, uh, Jesus says, What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. So if someone says, I'm scared, I'm fearful, we know that something's going on downside, inside. And so we need, to, we need to explore what is that, what's, what's driving that fear. Um, and fear can come from a lot of different places. I, I think two that are most common uh, when we think about fear uh, is uh, fear based out of unbelief. So uh, I, I'm, I'm scared that 
God can't provide for me or, or, or God can't handle this or I, my life is out of control. And so that needs to be addressed. And the other one that's probably uh, most common is fear that's coming out of idolatry, mm. meaning my heart wants something um, or it's afraid that it's not going to get something or something that it has is going to be taken away. Mm -hmm. um, so think about health. Maybe uh, I'm fearful that I'm going to have poor health and so I I'm scared all the time. I'm chasing after the latest uh, diet plan or pill or whatever. Um, that can come from a heart of idolatry. And so I think whenever I sit down with someone and start talking about fear, I start asking them, well, what's going on in your heart trying to discern where is this coming from? Would you say that th that kind of fear comes because we have a false impression of who we are? For example, um, things especially we can't control, mm. right? And so mm -hmm. we want them to change and we try to change them. So we're in fear of them either happening or, or we want them to stop happening. And so we almost put ourselves in the place of God. Right, And so we have a false impression of who we are. We idolize ourselves in order to take care of the situation. And when we can't, then we fall into more desperation. Mm. Yeah, I like that. In fact, I think one of the more helpful ways uh, to uh, discern that, uh, if you think about, uh, take a, draw a large circle on, on the, the whiteboard, and in the middle of that, draw a smaller circle. And in that smaller circle, circle are my responsibilities. And in that larger circle are God's responsibilities. If I try to make my circle too big, I start diving into fear. Um, because I'm trying to, like you said, control things that only God can control. Uh, the day I die, the weather outside, uh, the, uh, whether my child is going to express belief in Jesus. I can't control any of those. And so uh, when I'm becoming fearful, it's a good time to ask, where am I trying to play God mm -hmm. uh, in my life? So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I like that. Yeah, Sean, I think unfortunately the, our culture really right now uh, in the world plays into this idea of fear and mm -hmm. and even uh, some I would say in the media and in our government and different mm. entities wanting the congregation to be in some sort of of fear we we see it in the news and the media all the time where things get things get blown up maybe the maybe not reported as accurately as it could maybe there's there's pictures that are shown that don't actually mm -hmm. come from the event that are mm -hmm. you know we've seen these kinds of things right. and and there's a there's a there's uh, hunger for power and control mm. um, and a way you can control people is to drive them to mm, fear sure. um, yeah. and one of the one of the, the the disappointing things that that came out of um, you know the the whole covid pandemic and and those years was was even believers being um, so mesmerized mm. by a fear of getting sick that they right. would they would um, reject gathering uh, on a Sunday. And so you would see people that for a whole year wouldn't come to church. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that was, that was a hard time, you know? Mm -hmm. And of course there's, there's, there's all kinds of different yeah. cases in right. that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we definitely saw, we definitely saw uh, the church, I think really give into a fear right. uh, during that time. Well, and there was a false sense of security with that. Yeah. Because you'd ask, at least me, the people that I would speak to about this, the phrase they would use is, it's not safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And you really unpack that word. Yeah. It's not yeah. safe to go to church, first of all. Um, but it's not safe health-wise to be mm -hmm. around people. And we think about, um, you know, it, it's actually safe to be, if you're Daniel, right? Mm -hmm. In the thick of the line, that is the safest place. Or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? In the fiery mm -hmm. furnace. Yeah. Because the, the Lord is with you. So mm -hmm. I just, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Daryl Harrison, uh, Virgil Walker wrote a book called Why Are You Afraid? Which mm. I would definitely recommend. Yes. It's a short little devotional. Yes. Uh, but they talk about this. Illness, political turmoil, inflation, job security. Mm. These realities and more have many, even Christians today, locked in the throes of fear and anxiety about the future. Mm. So it is mm. something that I think you know, yeah. many of our viewers and listeners may be right. wrestling with right now. I, I, again, I think it comes down to really idolatry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, at the core, I think fear is produced from idolatry. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and what is idolatry? It's misplaced worship, mm -hmm. right? Yep. It's, it's worshiping or fearing something other, something greater than God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or trusting something other than God. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that could have a multitude of applications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, 
Thor mentioned um, you know, that word safe. And is safety bad? Well, no. No, that's fine. Um, I, I like working definition that Shane Swayze uses for idolatry. And I know it didn't start with him. I just conversations with him um, is that idolatry is not always uh, focusing on something that's bad as in like uh, Molech, right. you know, mm-hmm. but it's, it could even simply be uh, probably far more often is taking something good and making it ultimate. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and I like that definition right. because safety's again, not necessarily bad. Mm-hmm. Um, should you not walk in the middle of I-75? Right. Well, yeah, that's called stupidity. Yeah, right. uh, but when safety is the ultimate thing. But when safety is the sure. ultimate thing. Yeah. Exactly. Safety is idolized yes. above sure. exactly. whatever God has commanded. And above the gathering. Right. And, and a good kind of fear, a right kind of fear, motivates us to action. So if yeah. I see my child running across I-75, yeah. my fear for their safety motivates me. Yes. Um, but n- the government, as you pointed out, or other institutions also understand that yeah. fear motivates people. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. and bad fear in the case of the yeah. pandemic motivated people to disobey God. Yeah, right? and so yeah, and so I used to work in marketing, mm-hmm. um, and um, we were actually told that the two emotions that people will most likely act upon, mm-hmm. which means to click your ad, yeah, um, is uh, anger and fear. Mm, sure. Uh, so, like the very fundamental principles of advertising nowadays is mm-hmm. anger and fear sure mm-hmm. what you think about and we're getting ready to head into a full-blown political season i was gonna say next year. Uh, what it are, sounds like so, every political right, ad ever made. So, yeah. if i want to talk about my opponent what do i do it's a black and white ad and i tell them all the things that are going to happen to with red ink yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it scary yeah, scares right. you to death right, right. Uh, and i think it's as you've all mentioned it, there's this idol of well if i can have that whatever that is, mm-hmm. then I will be safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I will be. And in fact, God says, I am that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, if you have me, mm-hmm. you'll be safe. I love in, in Philippians 4, where which I would argue, by the way, that fear, worry, anxiety, those are all very closely related. And I like in Philippians 4, where Paul says, and we often jump to this verse, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, so on and so forth. Yeah. But right before that, immediately before that, it says, the Lord is at hand, yeah. Yeah. Right? right? Now that could mean the Lord's return is coming, but there's also a sense in which the Lord is with you. He's He's at hand, he's yeah. present. And because you have the Lord mm-hmm. with you, uh, you don't have to give in to anxiety. Instead, mm-hmm. you do this. Yeah, and Dan had mentioned that... Um, Frequently, in fact, most likely it's the most often com- uh, mentioned command, fear not. Mm-hmm. It's almost always, whether in the preceding verse, in that verse, or the verse afterwards, there is this um, identity or reality that mm-hmm. I am with you. Mm-hmm. So fear not. Why? Because I'm with you. Right. So yeah. how can I, why should I, you know, be anxious for nothing? Because the Lord is at I'm hand. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. James can, is also hits on that thought in chapter five. Fear is not mentioned, but the idea of, of patience and steadfastness mm. is mentioned mm-hmm. uh, through suffering mm-hmm. because of the same reason. Um, because of verse eight there, you also be patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Mm-hmm. So similar. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. And then, you know, probably the most famous Psalm, Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green, green pastures. He leads me uh, beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear mm-hmm. no evil. Mm-hmm. And and again, that's uh, that's a comma there. What's the next line? For, you're with me. for you are with yeah. me. Right, yeah. that's yeah. right. Sean and, and gentlemen, I would... I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this verse in Second Timothy, uh, chapter one, as uh, as Paul is writing to Timothy, and he says, "I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that was first in his grandmother and his mother, and dwells in you as well." And he says, "For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands, for God gave us a spirit not of fear." but of power and love and self-control. Mm. How, how would you uh, explain that? What would you be your thoughts on a spirit of fear that 
something that we, we should not have. Well, I think he's contrasting, obviously, uh, fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, mm-hmm. right? He's mentioning two of those there, love and self-control, as opposed to the fruit of our flesh, which, is, which would be, uh, you know, this, this fear, this living with basically, what is it? Not trusting God for X, Y, or Z, or thinking that this situation is, uh, I'm not going to be safe in, even though God has told me mm-hmm. to, to be there or go there or do this. And so I think it's he's contrasting the fruit of our flesh versus the fruit of the spirit. What is produced in us that patience, the love, the self control, the uh, is 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 godly, mm-hmm. right? And so what is produced in us by our flesh, which is natural for us to not trust God, to not to to see something else as greater than God or bigger than God, or something else can keep me safe or give me more satisfaction, whatever that is, comes from my flesh. And so I think what he's just trying to call out here to uh, Timothy is, um, you know, to fan into flame uh, through the laying of a hands um, is, you know, hey, you have a job to do, right? Mm-hmm. So go uh, serve serve the Lord in, in the ministry. Um, uh, lay on hands, right? I think what appointing other elders is probably the, the reference there, right? Laying on hands. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and don't be afraid. Go. Don't be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. That's right. the next one. Yeah. Of me or his prisoners. Sharing, or, and for what? Sharing in the suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Hey, Timothy, this is a hard uh, call that you've been called to, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, are, are you ready to suffer? You know, mm-hmm. Because if you're not ready to suffer as a minister of the gospel, then get out now. Mm-hmm. right? God is not giving you that fear. Uh, of suffering. God has given you the power to withstand suffering and to trust mm-hmm. him through it. Yeah, I might yeah. be interpreting this wrong, but I would I would say, you know, when we look at verse 6, the gift of God that you're supposed to fan into flame, that's not salvation. It's you don't receive salvation through the laying on of hands. This yeah. is a commissioning as a pastor. Right, yeah, yeah. as an elder. Ministry. Yeah. Yeah. For God gave us, so I think maybe this is too narrow of a way of interpreting it, but for God gave us, maybe that's all believers. <laughs> But in context, because Timothy was so timid and was wrestling with being a pastor uh, mm-hmm. and having to, you know, you've got to rebuke, mm-hmm. you've got to correct, you've got to train in righteousness, using the word, I think that perhaps, and I could be wrong, perhaps for God gave us as pastors, mm-hmm. as church leaders, yeah. a spirit, not a fear, but mm-hmm. we have to step up and have power, we have to have love, and we have to have self-control. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, that's, sure. that's how I've always understood that as well. Okay. Uh, but... In the same way that um, the um, the qualifications of an elder are good for all yeah. believers, yeah. Uh, it could be extrapolated out. Sure. But specifically, right. contextually, it, I, mm-hmm. I've always understood that as speaking about pastors as well. Yeah, that's why he says, therefore, verse 8. So yeah. based on that, don't be mm-hmm. ashamed of the testimony. Yeah. And, you know, and don't yeah. be don't be afraid of suffering. And then the us in verse nine is is all of us. He's right. saved us and called us to yeah. all to a holy calling. Right? Yeah. yeah, right. And so. and we can we can shift the us there because of the word therefore. He's he's drawing an application from right. the principle previously stated. Therefore, the application can be broader. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One one thing I would add in here, and you mentioned about playing God. Sometimes we don't think about that fear is actually coming from a place of pride. So Peter says this in 1 Peter 5, and this is often quoted, and you'll see it on plaques on people's walls. It'll say something like, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. The thing that we need to notice there is that that is the second half of a sentence. The first half says, humble yourselves mm-hmm. which would indicate what there's a there's pride going on mm-hmm. humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of god so that at the proper time he may exalt you mm-hmm. casting all your anxieties on him so i think uh there are many times when we're trying to play god mm-hmm. and because of that uh we're out of our heart is coming fear and anxiety and you know and all and god's saying humble yourself mm-hmm. repent of your pride acknowledge me, acknowledge my kingship, my lordship, uh, I will take care of you. And so um, there is a repentance that's necessary there. Uh, And sometimes people don't like that when you say you need to repent of being afraid. Uh, But when you start to uh, point down to what's causing it, oh, yeah, there's an idolatry there. Yeah. So so in a sense, what you're saying is like, yes, you need to repent from being afraid, but 
really, you need to repent from being prideful. Correct. There's you both. Know, right? And so I need to re- repent of the fruit, which is the fear. But I need to also repent at a root level, yeah. uh, which is idolatry. And can we actually read the whole text, uh, starting mm-hmm. in verse 1? Because the few verses prior to verse 6 as well actually discusses this as well. Um, uh, I'll start with uh, verse 5, actually. Sure. Uh, because, again, very similar to the Timothy passage, this is speaking directly to shepherds, uh, overseers. Um, and then uh, verse 5 um, says, Likewise, you who are young, be subject to the elders. So he goes further than just talking about the elders. He's saying all of you now. Uh, likewise, you who are young, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that in the proper time he may exalt you. Sure. Uh, so, so yeah, I, yeah, I think that really emphasizes sure. that point. And I think you know part of the disciplinary hand of God in the life of a believer, as this says, uh, is that he opposes remaining pride right and so yeah. it's as though you feel his hand pushing down on yeah. you because it says under the mighty hand of god you need to humble yourself yeah. uh and it's when you recognize wow my pride is uh fostering this fear i need to remind myself of god's mighty hand and his provision uh so i repent yeah. of that pride sean yeah. i had a question for you um i talked to some people who they would maybe push back on the idolatry mm-hmm. side of it uh, or the pride side of it. And they're, uh, the way they would describe it is they're not scared necessarily of a bad diagnosis or uh, the economy is going to crash. Um, and, and they're not scared of spiders. Or, mm-hmm. just, there's no specific thing that they're afraid of. But they would use the phrase crippling anxiety where they almost can't get out of bed, can't function mm-hmm. on a day-to-day basis. Um, what, what hope or what encouragement... Can we give someone who's who's, you know, speaking in that sure. sort of or framing it in that way? Sure, and that's I, I would that's probably there's a long process, but really it comes down to I, I something's wrong with my relationship with God. There's something about God that I'm not believing, and so I would probably start with what are the character qualities of God? What are the names of God? Like what what is what is who is the person of God? And the the more I can gaze on that. And I find my hope, his power, his control, his sovereignty, his kingship. The more I can trust in that God, the lessening, and I would say lessening, I don't know it's always an immediate change, but the lessening that crippling anxiety or fear has in my life. Mm -hmm. Because I know whose I am, and I know who I am in him. And so I think it begins with a study of God. Uh, knowing God, now I would go to that book, J.I. Packer's yeah. Knowing God, because yeah. the more you know God, mm-hmm. the more trust you have in Him. Yeah, because that's what I've seen. I've seen a focus on like a hyper awareness of whatever the anxiety or the worry or sure. the, the fear is, rather than a healthy, like you said, a healthy focus on yeah. the attributes of the person of God. Right. Yeah, know? and I, I would say that, I mean, we are physical people, right? So yeah. when we have crippling anxiety, Right, mm-hmm. uh, especially caused by something spiritual in nature, like we've been talking about, it's gonna manifest itself in physical ways, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, I've taught, I've counseled people who say I can't get out of bed, mm-hmm. right? I don't want to get out of bed. I have no motivation to do anything, and because they're experiencing some physical, you know, because we're our our spirits and bodies are tied together, right? right? Sure. We're not just spiritual people; we're physical sure. people as well, yeah. Yeah. and so um, obviously, you know, both have to be treated. You know what I mean? Uh, what happens a lot of times, I think, is like we, we, you know, especially those of the secular world, just like to treat the physical body without treating the spiritual, mm-hmm. or something at the root that's affecting the physical yeah. is spiritual in nature, and they just they uh, treat the symptoms of the of the body without right. getting to to the core. Right. And so yeah. I would say it always comes back to that, even though something, of course, could just be physical itself. And you're drinking too much caffeine and your heart's fluttering. And you're right. It could be, it could right. be yeah. something... Don't drink eight cups of coffee. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Unless so you can't right. grow a beard, perhaps. Right. Right. <laughs> so it, could, it, it could be, I think what we're saying is it could be that not everything could be tied to 
some kind of idolatry sure. or, right. or, yeah. or something like yeah. that. There sure. could be some physical manifestations, same thing that you could physically change that sure. will, it is harming you. And I think yeah. that's why as a counselor, one of the first questions I ask is, when is the last time you've had a physical checkup with your doctor? Let's yeah. rule that out yeah. first. Yeah. And then now let's, let's yeah. tackle that. Well, but, yeah, but we can't ignore the spiritual, no, which is really the, right. the thrust yeah. of our conversation. Yeah, yeah. It, it should be like, you know, you should just be introducing the spiritual side, not to the negation of the physical. Because, right. you know, again, like, when was the last time you had a physical checkup? Right. How have you been sleeping lately? Yeah, My right. goodness, like, how much does sleep affect right. fear and anxiety and such like that? Right. Um, yeah. But yeah. if I, it may, it may be, um, I would counsel uh, someone who's fearful through a lot of these things that we're talking about. But then again, it, back to that Philippians 4 passage, um, it, Paul says, uh, don't be anxious about anything. And then he gives some some solutions, some things. He says, you know, in everything, prayer, supplication, present requests to God. But then notice uh, verse 8. He talks about a change in thinking. He says, whatever is true and honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things, okay? Well, who meets that description perfectly? Jesus does, right? Okay, God, the Godhead does. So I need to be fixing my thinking there. Uh, and so that's where I want to direct someone who's fearful. Yes, we'll talk about your fear, but that's that's a byproduct. Let's talk about God. Let's talk about the Godhead. And then as I begin doing that, notice verse 9. He says, now what you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things. Yeah. Do these things. So you see, uh, you see the prayer, the reliance on God. You think you see the thinking about God, and then you see the doing. And so, mm-hmm. someone who's crippled in fear, they can't even get out of bed. Part of it is as they begin thinking about God, we're encouraging them. Okay, now we need to do. Let's mm-hmm. put into yeah. practice, mm-hmm. and we we reverse that spiral mm-hmm. from going downward to moving upward. Uh, and I think that's that's, that's 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 the key. You know, mm-hmm. obedience. Obedience mm-hmm. is the key, and that's yeah. all, unfortunately where a lot of people stop. They stop before that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there can be a. There can be an, a, a, an ungodly desire to kind of stay also in a right. place of a cycle that, right. you know, that right. doesn't quite, you know, right. we love to talk about it. Right. A, lot of time, right. a lot of people love to talk about it and some love to have sympathy as well. Sure. But then it's like when you actually call them to the truth of God's word, sometimes there can be a little bit of a block there. It changes yeah. hard, yeah. right? right. Yeah. yeah. Would we say that... Um, then, it, you know, it, we hear over and over in the scripture about the fear of the Lord. The mm-hmm. fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, there is a, an unhealthy and a sinful right. and an idolatrous fear. But then there's a, a, an appropriate fear. Right. We're commanded to fear. Right. Yes. A righteous yeah. fear, which yeah. is a reverence, yeah. a submission to, and a terror. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. Right. Yeah. A, 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 that reverence flows from the fact that God is absolutely just, mighty, omnipotent. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the fear of the Lord, I think, is... Right. Yeah, f- the fear of the Lord. Yeah, Solomon says at the end of Ecclesiastes, the end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God mm-hmm. and keep his, his commandments, yep. for right. this is the whole duty of man. And there you man. see the connection between fear, respecting, honoring, yeah. and keep his commandments. There's right. an obedience right. factor yeah. there. And so would you say, you know, it's been said, everybody worships, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. So everybody sure. worships, no matter who you are, yeah. you worship something Gotta serve somebody. or somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say... Would you say in the same way everybody fears, right? You're either right. fearing God or you're fearing something else. Right. I, I would say those are the same sentences. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. basically, I mean, it's just another way to say the same yeah. thing. Sure. Um, and so really the way to solve our fears is, or, or to treat our fears is to have a more fear of God, right? To yeah. have a... They're just misplaced. Misplaced, yeah. misplaced, misplaced yeah. worship. Yeah. And it right. goes back to yeah. the right. idolatry. Right. So you think about what Paul said in Ephesians 4. He says, put off the old man. So I'm putting off the wrong fear. Yeah. I'm being renewed in my mm-hmm. thinking. I'm thinking yeah. correctly about mm-hmm. Christ. And I'm putting on the mm-hmm. right kinds of fear. Right. Yeah. And, or, I, and I think mm-hmm. uh, the way a lot of people tend to do that is, uh, the way they think about it is they'll stop and they'll want to shove off the old stuff. Mm-hmm. And then... You'll get to this, you know, somehow neutral state, mm-hmm. and then you'll swing over by putting on the right mm-hmm. stuff. And we shouldn't think of that like, yeah, it's clothing, like it's kind of the analogy there. But like, really, what he's getting at is you put off this stuff by putting on right. this putting new on stuff. Christ, right. Yeah, exactly. like put off the mustache 
and yeah, I'm just I'm I, I'm reminded of the story of you know David and Goliath. You know, we all have heard those moralistic sermons on David and Goliath. You know, sure. yeah. you know, just you know, you're you're the giant. Beef, you know, overcome your fear. Obviously, we know that's the wrong interpretation, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, but look how David approached Goliath. I mean, there's a lot to be said there, right? right. Obviously, we need to understand we're not David, right? right. Yeah. We've said that many times. Yep. Um, but in that story, he goes before Goliath with a fear of God. Yep. This That's, guy mm-hmm. has just violated and created this abomination with his words, cursed the God of Israel. God, David was not going to have it. Yeah. Right. You know, he says, you're not fearing my God, essentially is what he's saying. This is who my God is. This is Look what my God has done. He has delivered me from the bears and the lions, and he'll deliver me from you. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because David feared God more than Goliath. Right? Yeah. And, and, and so it's not like a moralistic sermon, but there's a lot of principles in there mm-hmm. that, that we're always fearing, we're always worshiping. Yeah. And so we need to examine the things that we're fearing, and, and essentially we need to come to the place where we repent and say, wow, I'm fearing that more than I am God, or what God has promised, or what God, uh, who God is. Yeah. And I think that's you know on your way to then mm-hmm. treating your fears. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Uh, one uh, resource I would recommend, and I know you guys have some others. Uh, a lady named Elise Fitzpatrick wrote a book called Overcoming Fear, Worry, and Anxiety. Uh, it's been very helpful. I, I would be a little cautious about some of her more recent works. I think she's kind of uh, turned a bit of a corner. Uh, but that book uh, has been helpful uh, in in my counseling ministry to help people think through where is this coming from. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Amen. Anxiety yeah. Attacks, also by John MacArthur, has been a yeah. good resource for a lot of years. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm. Sure. Um, so I have a quick question then, because uh, we've talked a lot about the spiritual side and, you know, we gave, you know, a little dog ear saying like, it's not always spiritual. Um, do you think that because we actually do live in fallen flesh now that this flesh is corrupt, uh, do you think that it could be a possibility that some of the fear and some of the anxiety is purely physical, like maybe not necessarily sleep uh, or diet or stuff like that, but like various other things. I, I don't, I'm not a counselor or, um, um, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to go that way because it, sure. it, if it is purely physical, then there should be some test, a diagnostic test that a doctor could run and say, Oh, sure. you have this that's causing your fear. Uh, mm-hmm. Today, doctors cannot do that. Yeah. Right. So your yeah. fear is coming from your inner man. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's the avenue that I would tackle most directly, other than what we mentioned earlier, if you're drinking tons of caffeine or sure. something like that. You know, so basically a good diet, good exercise. Yeah. Good and if those sleep, are present yeah. and you still have fear, it, yeah, it's not. But also not like living alone as well. Because mm-hmm. like, I think that tends to. Um, mm. uh, emphasize some of it and I, I just wanted to bring up that First Peter 5 passage again because a lot of that like where is that in the context of like mm. submit yourselves to whom? Mm-hmm. The elders. Mm. So it sounds that uh, part of repenting from pride mm. it sounds uh, like giving your fear over to the uh, the Lord is done properly in the context of the local church. Mm-hmm. How would you guys mm-hmm. understand that? Well, community certainly provides mm-hmm. uh, that encouragement that we need to push us toward Christ. And so yeah. to try to do the Christian life alone uh, is, would definitely lend itself to a temptation toward fear. Sure. Yeah, it's not a coincidence that the charts are skyrocketing right now with uh, people with anxiety and with all these newfounded fears and at the same time the correlated uh, scale is that right. church attendance uh, by and large in the west is yeah. decreasing so i don't think that's yeah. a coincidence right. yeah and I, and I would say you know going back to your original question about being uh, purely physical i wouldn't say that either because that would tend to give somebody an excuse yeah, because like, well, I just this is this is just who I am. I can't help it. I'm just a, a fearful person. Well, no, you're not, because then you're denying the power of the gospel, right? You're denying the fruit of the spirit that could be developed in you. Not saying you're not going to struggle with it, but sure. it's something to be, you know, dealing with and 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 you know, uh, get, giving over to the Lord for victory. Sure. sure. Yeah. And and how I would generally answer that is like, could it? Could there be physical causes such as diet, exercise, loneliness, 
uh, maybe, sure, but we're also not purely physical people. Exactly. But we're also not purely spiritual people Correct. either. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a quote that's uh, floating around out there. Um, it's attributed to C.S. Lewis, but he never actually said it, is that um, he, the quote is that uh, we are souls with a body. And that's not true. No, we are embodied souls. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not, we're not materialistic. That's Darwinianism. Uh, we reject that wholeheartedly. But on the other side, we're not, we're not soul. We're not with Gnostics. Body. We're yeah. not Gnostics right. either. Right. Yeah, we right. are embodied souls. Uh, to say that, to say that we, you know, the flesh is just some sort of accidental, mm-hmm. um, would actually to deny the goodness of God's creation. Sure. Uh, but then simultaneously we need to remember that there is a fallenness to it as well that our spirit is being renewed but currently our body is dying and will die but will only be renewed at the new heavens and the new earth and that's the thing we're headed towards a place yeah. where yes. there's no more fear no fear yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. there's no yeah. more fear our bodies won't fear yes. our spirits won't right. fear in a sinful way obviously right. we will fear the lord right. so looking forward can actually bring that hope yeah. that abolishes sure. that fear it won't always be like this we're no right. fear exactly. sure. <laughs> yeah. remember no fear with the brain in the 90s oh, sure. oh, that's right. goodness, <laughs> goodness. Well, guys, what a helpful discussion, and I pray that you've been blessed by it, and uh, pray that you would uh, seek counsel, especially from your elders, from uh, Christian friends that can help you with these matters. Mm -hmm. This has been another episode of the Gospel Forum Podcast, and until next time, keep keep on reforming. reforming.